so I went to the lab. I got there from the airport about oh eight eight thirty, and walked into Krebs's office, and he assigned me the task of doing the NADP NADPH ratio because he'd just done the NAD NADH ratio in the mitochondria and. At that Weber conference in Indianapolis, George Kale asked him what the NADP, NADPH ratio was. So Krebs assigned that topic to me. And he, he got up after he gave me an assignment and wanted me to start to go to work. And I said, look, I've been up all night. I'm not going to go to work. <laughs> so I went home and bed. <laughs> but he expected me to go in the lab and go to work. No. First year, oh, he'd talk to me. It was very nice, uh, but he, we never talked about the work. We'd talk about all, all sorts, of just general topic. He was very nice, and uh, it was only when I brought him the answer that, uh, and he really he didn't think the answer was right, and uh, so then he again didn't talk to me about it, and then. After he thought about it for two weeks, then we started writing the paper, and that was the longest paper he ever wrote. <laughs> it took us about two or three months to write that paper. Well, Pat Lund uh, was the one that trained me and told me how to do and taught me how to do enzymatic analysis and whatnot. When I finally got the answer of what the NADP NADPH ratio was, I couldn't get. Uh, the glutamate dehydrogenase reaction has unequal terms, and it has alpha ketoglutarate ammonia divided by glutamate. So since you're doing them in micromoles per gram or millimolar, it, it, it gives you uh, an error in that unequal constant of 10 to the 3, and I was getting uh, off in the calculation by 10 to the 3, because that reaction has an unequal number of metabolites. And Pat, someone that pointed that out, and once it pointed that out, then it all fell into place. <laughs> so one day I said, well, you know, Pat's better than these professors. Why don't you give her a degree? Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, oh, 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 all right. <laughs> and then Marion got it. Agree, but he didn't ever think about things like that. He, uh, but he, he, he loved his two girls, and he would, if he came in the lab, he'd go sit and talk to them, because rather than the professors, because he liked talking to the girls, not the professors. <laughs> NADP is in the cytoplasm and in the mitochondria, and also bound. It's a total measurement of something that has no thermodynamic meaning. You you want the you want the NADP in the compartment of interest, whatever you're interested in, the cytoplasm or mitochondria. If you measure the total NADP, it doesn't tell you anything because it's made up of at least three different components: cytosolic, mitochondria, and bound. So it, it's just a composite number that has no meaning. If you if you if you measure the NAD and NADP, NAD and NADH ratio in whole liver, it's about five. But the cytoplasm is about 500 to 1,000, in fact, and the mitochondria is about five. So it doesn't, it, it has no real meaning, and it doesn't change between fed and starved. Uh, and so all the current papers that are, that are, uh, the ones that are almost invariably in cell and nature, uh, from uh, where they're trying to measure NAD and NADH, they measure total values, and these, which means nothing. And these, it shows you the lack of scholarship of the current editors of these major journals.